It's a breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We look at the emergence of the third force uh, in Nigeria ahead of the 2023 uh, national elections. Now, the much talked about third force finally would be, do we have it here? Seven political parties joint forces ahead of the upcoming 2023 uh, general elections, all in a bid to put up a stronger fight against the all-ruling Progressive Congress, the APC and a frontline opposition, People's Democratic Party, the PDP. Now, the parties in the coalition are the New Nigerians People's Party, the NNPP, the African Democratic Congress, ADC, the Social Democratic Party, the SDP, the Allied People's Movement, the APM, and the People's Redemption Party, the PRP, the Labour Party, that's the LP, and the National Rescue Movement, the NRM. Also, looking at that, you have at least five political parties denying having agreement with the Third Force Movement or any other group to present a joint presidential candidate in 2023 elections. We do have fine gentlemen joining the conversation this morning. Uh, Dr. Kach Ununuju, a political scientist and analyst. It's good to have you join us this morning. Thank you for having me. All right. Uh, so we, we also have Nika Gule, who's a public affairs analyst, uh, joining the conversation this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. And good morning to you in the studios and good morning to our viewers. All right. So let, let's start off with uh, Dr. Kaj Nunuju. Uh, do you see a, a reputation of what happened in 2015, happening in 2023? Now that you have, I mean, you know, seemingly a thought force. Uh, well, a thought force is a speculative intention. It has not yet happened. Uh, for me to take anyone seriously, you need to show me capacity. So far, the parties you're talking about are parties without any elected member. So until we see parties that have won election form this kind of thought force, uh, that's it. I've looked at what's there. I've seen NNPP. I have also seen SDP. Uh, yes, this may have been hurriedly put together, but would they have cohesion? If they do have, who are the members? Who are the arrowheads? A lot of what you're seeing calling themselves third force, from what I see, are disgruntled Buhari's allies who were disappointed. If some of these people are the people who formed the coalition known as the APC, and they have now seen uh, how very, very blind their strategies were. Buhari took them there, he let them down, and now some of them are running off and saying it's third force. Don't take them seriously, please. I see the main issues still going in in the two main parties as they are struggling right now uh, for the soul of the country. Uh, if anything is to be uh, to be seen, I will see it inside the two main parties. What you calling thought force? I, should, I don't think anybody who so serious should take them seriously. These are principally members of the APC who are not happy. So I expect a progression of that anger in the APC to actually escalate as Buhari sets uh, intentions to undermine the primary process and as he did in choosing the chairman, he will also impose a presidential candidate. That is when I will now see reactions which could now lead me to say we might have a gathering of those who are not happy and if that's what you call thought force, uh, we will see that. But <laughs> right now, I have not seen the thought force. What I see are disgruntled APC members who are trying to organize themselves in different platforms. But then, uh, what makes it very difficult is electoral act. Because if we are also waiting for what I've just said to happen, which is those who lose out after Buhari imposes a candidate on the APC, uh, you understand the electoral act currently says that if you run for elections and go through the primaries, on party A, in this case APC, and then you leave APC, you will not be available 
for the 2023 election on another party. So the right thing to do is to leave the party now and don't go through with the imposition, which I believe the uh, uh, document 18 on the APC nomination form forces them to do. Uh, please don't call this to go. Call me the name two people who you will say are not disgruntled members of the APC in what you're not talking about, the gathering of these who are angry. Okay. I don't want to take them seriously. Uh, please Nick, just forget them. Yeah, please. Nick, Nick Agule, uh, you live, listen to Katja Nunujo who says that they um, uh, have not this so-called third force. They haven't won. They don't have a single seat anywhere, a single elected position. A uh, group of these gruntled APC members who are looking for the next best thing to uh, a platform to win an election on. And uh, whilst they may not have a chance for the presidency, is it possible that they can start something and be a third force, a force for pressure, political force, an alternative, um, a, a rising sun of sorts uh, in the Nigerian political space? We look at the NNPP where you had uh, you have Rabi Musa Kwankwa, so basically taking over the party structure. And now he is a strongman of counter politics, has been joined by his brother from another strongman in counter politics, uh, uh, Shekarao, in the same NNPP. You have some no names and um, respected politicians in the SDP. Can they make an impact, no matter how small? Uh, Nick, thank you for that uh, question. Certainly, they can make an impact. Certainly, they can make an impact, but not at the national level. So to that extent, I agree with Dr. Katch that this may be efforts a bit too late in the run-up run to the 2023 elections, but it is certainly a step in the right direction. This is what we call democracy. In a democracy, the more choices the people have, the better the deepening of democracy. So if people are guaranteed their freedom of association under our constitution, then I will say that these politicians that have come together to form this third force aren't doing anything wrong. They are doing what is legal. They are doing what is their democratic right. And they are free to go ahead and do this. But in agreement with Dr. Katch is that this thought force will not be effective at the national level at this time of the day. Our, our politicians need to understand that running for an election doesn't have to start at when it is months or weeks away from the election. We have politicians that show up on the scene for elections, and after the elections are over, they disappear into the oblivion, only for them to show up again when it is close to the election. My advice to politicians in Nigeria is that be on the scene right from the beginning. So when in 2023 we inaugurate a new government, be on the scene. Form yourself into a shadow government if you want. Criticize government policy. Be there for the people. When the government is issuing pain to the people, you should be issuing palliatives to the people. You should be the alternative voice. You should be there all the way through the four years. So that the people will come to believe in you, they will come to see in you an alternative. And then when it is time for elections, you can then cash in on that support base that you built over that four-year period. So this is not a question of, I, I form a coalition, we run an election, we don't win the election, we all go our ways, go and do our things, and then when it is time for campaigns, we come back onto the scene. So that would be my advice. But this third force that has been formed is going to, if they keep themselves together, and like Katch said, if they don't self-destruct, because that is one of the risks that these hastily packaged coalitions have. 
is a is a, a, a these are people who are strange bedfellows coming together with the idea that they want to cease power. Now, are they going to be cohesive? Are they going to agree? Are they going to relegate really their own personal interest for the interest of the people, for the interest of the majority? That is the question that needs to be answered. But like in Kano, you have uh, two strong men, like Rally said, in the Kano political scene who are in this uh, third force. So they could probably make a new road into Kano and into some other areas. And actually, this is actually the basic building blocks of forming a third force. You have to start right from the local government to state assemblies, to governors, to national assembly members, and build yourself up before you can actually think of having a chance at the presidency. As it stands, this third force has no chance at the presidency, but they could have a chance at the local elections. Uh, can they really have a chance? Uh, let's also have, um, I mean, Katra Nunuju is still uh, with us this morning. With the fact that you have um, about five political parties denying any involvement or any association with any movement to form uh, this force for the elections in 2023, uh, will there even be any chance of a thought force with all of this happening? I mean, you have the uh, N NNPP, the PRP, the ZLP, among others, saying, hey, we have no business with any thought force. Oh, well, first, you need to look at national politics. Nationally, we have 774 local governments. In those places, you have 8,400 plus national political, uh, national political wards. In that, you have from 120,000 to 200,000 polling boots. So if you now have a party that will be able to harvest vote cast at the presidential election, you need a party with more than 200,000 persons. If now all the 200,000 become agents, that means all the polling booths will have at least one member of that party in each polling booth across the 774 local governments. But what you now have, a uh, mushroom, you know, uh, briefcase issues, uh, that Kwan Kwasu is angry in Kano because he's finally been outplayed. You know, he made some very, very, very blind calculations and he got into a pit in Kano. And that's why you've seen he's stuck in Kano. So the best he can do is to use the NMPP to run local Kano elections like House of Assembly, House of Red, or Senate, but not national. Secondly, he's not even agreeable to a lot of people across the country. The kind of politics he did, remember the killing of the electoral officer in Kano while he was governor, and that was part of the conspiracies they brought together to bring the PDP down. The same APC he ran to and brought Buhari to power is the APC he's running away from. Who, again, would trust him after what he has done for his own party? You know what the Costa Nostra does in Italy? If they see a man that kills his boss to come and join them, they will never trust you. So those who undermine the PDP to bring Buhari and they rather run back to PDP and seeking ticket. Now, if you want to know what to look to, look at the pictures that came from London yesterday. P2B is being embraced by Downing Street. Same way is being embraced by Washington. That is what is big on the political scene. Not noise by angry old men. Those things don't make sense. It is the Downing Street meeting by P2B. That, for me, is the most significant political development we've had in the past week. And then you also have a corresponding embrace of him in Washington. That is what matters. So leave all these people making it So far, he's been able to capture the imaginations of the youth across the country and Nigerians. That's what I'm looking at. If you're going to make an impact, as I said earlier, you can only do that on the major political parties. It may be very difficult to fight in there, but you fight in there. If Buhari has done his eight years, of course, everybody's expecting it will now go to the south. That is the actions. Not when you're talking about people just coming together because they can't find space in the major pool 
of the PDP and the APC. That's where I expect they should go and fight. Because if you want to score any goal in any match, you must be inside the stadium. You cannot win outside the stadium. So all these peripheral parties, some of them don't even have a single councillor telling me they are coming together to form an alliance. Alliance of what? Show energy. If it were parties that already have elected persons not trying to form some kind of a corporation, because the way the law is, it's too late for them to register a brand new party. Then I will know. But then look at the men and their past. Do they look like people who can work with other people? Certainly not compass. So leave those issues around. That's why you see those people announcing that, uh, no, 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 we have nothing to do with them. Let them keep trying. I don't see a third force. It was too late to happen today. All right. But how are you going to do it? Okay. Uh, 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 catch, catch, catch that. That's an interesting question. How are you going to do it? Um, they, they are saying that of, of the, the, uh, the parties in this coalition, they are adopting a single line candidate or single line of candidates and they are adopting the uh, the Labour Party as a frontline party which they will use for this purpose. Um, uh, it was Lushe Gomobasanjo who, if I remember, first talked about, or most famously talked about this third force in Nigerian politics. Um, uh, do you think, and I come back over to you, Nika Gule, do you think that this is possible ever? Um, because from what you both are saying, uh, for the 2023 elections, it's PDP or APC. But going forward, will we see any other party, any other political force or group or coalition of stage these two parties maybe in the near, near future, the next election or two? Nick? Yes, it's, it's very possible. But there's a lot of homework that needs to be done. You can't just form a third force out of the blues. It has to start from the local levels to the state levels to the national levels. So it, is, it, is, it can be done. Another way that it can also be done is to have a popular candidate. Like uh, Dr. Kachi is saying, uh, Peter Obi has got support across the nation. I, I support him myself because of what he has done in the past. But I believe that he is in the wrong group because like I, like I did predict on this program in the past, you know, after the governor or Tom zoning committee gave a press conference to say that they have decided on 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 the zoning formula i was called to this um, to this program to analyze and i did predict on this program that the the, the zoning is going to be thrown open because uh, some party chieftains in the north like the articles the tambua the sarakis had already bought nomination forms and had them in their hands and so there's no way the PDP will say they should dump those forms and they were zoning the ticket to the south or anywhere else. And that has come to pass. And what I'm predicting, again, on this program is that I don't see PDP handing the ticket to Peter Obi. I really don't think PDP will hand the ticket to Peter Obi because as much as Peter Obi is popular with Nigerians, he may not be as popular with the delegates, which All is right, one Nika, at this Nika time. Gule, we have so to coming to a third force, we have if to the third force down. picks someone like Peter will be a popular Nigerian and hoist him as their presidential candidate, they, they could cause, they could cause um, an upset Thank you. in my own mind. Thank you, yes. Nika Gule. We have to let you go. Thank you so much for being part of The Breakfast. We appreciate your time. Nika Gule is a public affairs analyst. We also have Dr. Kach Nunuju, who's also a political analyst and scientist, joining us uh, this morning on The Breakfast, looking at the possibility of having a third force, especially with the fact that you have political parties, about seven of them coming up together. Uh, that's the much that we can take on the breakfast this morning. Thank you so much, fine gentlemen, for being part of the breakfast. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very much. much. And have, have a nice day. If you missed out on any part of it, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Boko. Have a fantastic day. And I'm Kofi Bachelsford. Return tomorrow. Good morning.